What's up, everybody? It's your boy Dave P, my main man, RJ Papino. And if you're new to the channel, we are the cream. The cream stands for cash flow, real estate, and money. We're full time real estate investors. We buy and sell and fix and rent properties every single day. And it's our goal to provide good content to you to help you on your real estate investing journey. RJ, what are we getting into today? Today, we are going to be talking about some of the common questions we get in real estate investing. So ever since we started getting on social media and, you know, I'm, you mainly see me on TikTok and Instagram, uh, now we have a YouTube channel, we get a lot of the same questions. So we're going to address some of those questions today. I'm excited about it. And the vibe is alive, my friend. So one of the big questions that we get is, you know, what's the first step in getting started with real estate? And, and really, uh, you know, what do you have to say about that, Arja? Well, you know, it's, it's how do you get started in real estate? What's the first step? Like how, to become, how, do, we, how do we become successful real estate investors? Like that, that's like the common theme here. And the first step is to actually, you gotta find a deal, right? You're not a real estate investor if you're not finding good deals. And in our experience, we've been doing this uh, collectively since 2005, the best deals are gonna be off market. We're gonna go direct to that homeowner that's motivated. Whether they own a house, uh, you know, a, an apartment, a duplex, fourplex, whatever it is, there's gotta be some motivation there. And the best deals that we've ever done have been off market. They're not on the MLS, they're not on LoopNet or wherever the uh, multiple listing services, they're not gonna be there. You have to go direct to seller. You can actually go direct to seller um, and find it off market through a wholesaler too, as long as it's still a good deal, right? Because we all have to have margins, but we can't overpay for properties. But the majority of what we've done is go direct to seller. A lot of, you know, people ask us all the time, do we buy from other wholesalers? And the answer is absolutely yes. The challenge with that sometimes is a wholesaler is a fellow capitalist, just like me and you, and they're gonna want to make as much money as they possibly can on this deal, as they should. We don't hate on any wholesaler who's out there trying to make a buck no, for themselves because we wholesale properties yeah, ourselves, and that's how we got started. We still wholesale to this day. Um, but if you are buying a, uh, a property from a wholesaler, you got to keep in mind they're probably trying to make as much as they possibly can, yeah. which means they're marking this property up as much as they can. So you just don't want to make sure you're not paying too much for any properties. Um, when it comes to evaluating a property, this is the next thing. So RJ had just mentioned, number one, you got to have a good deal. And there's a really good saying that we have heard in our career. It's, look, you make your money when you buy, you get paid when you sell. You make your money when you buy, so you got to buy good deals. And like RJ said, go off market. That's the best thing. When you're evaluating deals, there's a few metrics that you got to keep in mind. First one is the ARV. RJ, what does ARV stand for? That stands for after repair value. And basically, it's what the house is worth after you make the repairs to it. Exactly. So it's what is this property? You're looking at a property and it's as is condition. It's a property that probably needs work, right? Needs cleaned out and uh, needs some type of work to it. But what are properties in this immediate area? That's important to note as well. Not mm -hmm. just properties in general in the whole city. In this immediate area, right? What are they trading for or selling for in their after repair value? So if this property that you're evaluating was fully fixed up, what could you sell it for? And then also, what could you rent it for? So mm -hmm. that's the first thing you're looking at is how much work is it gonna take to get this property to, to be valued at what the other houses are, that are already fixed up are selling for and renting for as well. So what we like to do in our uh, training within our company, and we train our um, acquisition specialists to look at every single deal as far as what is our all in gonna be. So what is our all in? What does all in stand Basically for? Basically what all in is, is your purchase, what you're acquiring the property for, and then the construction, so your rehab. So that's your all in basis. You wanna find out what you can buy the property for and what the rehab is for. And that's why it's also what Dave was saying is that the after repair value, you need to know what the property is worth after you purchase it and rehab it and see what kind of margin you have, what what profit you have, whether it's, you know, you're going to do the burst strategy or if you're going to flip it. 
It's really important that you learn how to negotiate these off-market deals because in this equation that we're coming up with here are all in the purchase price and the construction. The only number that you can control is what you pay for the property. And the only way you can control that is if you negotiate it, it's what you negotiate with the seller, mm -hmm. right? Um, because the construction is the construction. The materials are the materials. You're not going to go to Home Depot and negotiate materials, right? You're, and, and material costs are at all-time highs, and labor costs are at all-time highs. I suppose you can negotiate a little bit when it comes to the labor of the construction of this property, but remember, they're, they're a subcontractor. They're a business themselves. They're not going to take a big discount here and work for you. They don't need to. So many people need work right now, and they're demanding a premium for their services, for their sure. labor. So the one thing that you can really control in a real estate transaction to keep that all in figure as low as possible is the purchase price. And you can do that by negotiating with these sellers and finding off market sellers are the best prospects to negotiate with. Yeah, and what we found is that, you know, as, as these prices increase with labor and uh, materials, you really have to stay kind of in the know and competitive with your prices for contractors. And you have to work it out to where you're saying, hey, we can get you consistent work, not just during the, the busy season. In Ohio, the busy season is what? Spring and summer. But we can keep you busy throughout the whole year because we buy throughout the year. And so that, that's one thing I want to leave you a little nugget is that you got to present to that contractor the ability that, hey, we can provide you volume. We buy you know, 10, 15 houses a, a, a month, but we need the volume pricing not the homeowner pricing, the volume pricing. So you have to negotiate that win-win with the contractor, which is your team member. It's a team member. Like RJ just said, treat your contractors and subcontractors like, contractors like a team, because that's exactly what they are. You don't want to approach uh, the relationship to a contractor or subcontractor as if it's you versus them. No one gets anywhere when it's you know headbutting and us versus them. You want to work together. They want the volume work that you can provide and you want a quality job at a fair price uh, on, that's done timely, right? That's done on a timely manner. We'll get into uh, how to manage contractors on another video. Um, but make sure you stay tuned on the next video. We're going to be getting into private money and how we're talking to our private money lenders, how we're raising private money. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We truly appreciate it. We want to give you the best content we possibly can. Like the video if you did find uh, some nuggets in this particular video and share it with another real estate investor or somebody who's looking to get into real estate investing. My name is Dave Perichin. This is RJ Papino. Together we're the cream and we'll see you on the next video.